Hey, good morning. You're here, this uh, Ben with Stuart Lake once again. So here's here's number two in the practice series. Uh, I I like a lot of aspects of this guy, and then uh, a couple aspects of it I don't like. But uh, the intent was to look at some basic cuts on this. Uh, try to get things down, and you'll notice that uh, doing this in miniature with a really crappy piece of wood that his ear broke off, so I just kind of um, modified it a little bit, and hopefully no one will know if I didn't know, and then I, I did go ahead and, and paint him, and the challenging part's going to be getting the texture in uh, with the saw, the chainsaw, but uh, I don't think that should be too big a problem, and I, I will be getting that in a day or two, but uh, here's, a, here's that crappy piece of uh, limb that I went out uh, at the lake here, and it had fallen down over the winter. And uh, I picked it because it had some bark on it. And then, ironically enough, I ended up taking all the bark off of it, with the exception of uh, this guy right here. So, the concept was to put this guy in a stump. I didn't know if I was going to uh, stick his paws out. I've, I've done little stump carvings like this before with a bear coming out of it. And, uh, anything from a regular bear to a cutesy bear. I typically don't like the cartoony bears. I like to go a little bit more on the realistic side. Uh, and if I if I shoot for realistic on the bears, uh, sometimes I end up with a cartoon uh, looking character when something or other goes wrong in the carving or uh, it evolves that way. So uh, I can do a cutesy bear a lot of times without even without even trying. All right, so there's a couple more, and uh, these, of course, would just be a cut down with the saw and uh, do the blocking out on the top of him here. And the blocking is really kind of what I'm after here. I, I don't have a pattern, and when I get ready to, to do the real Megillah, I, I'll get a, I'll pull up a pattern and uh, probably put it on a, on a computer or on a laptop sitting off on the side. So the second, second cut across here would be the ears and I kind of wanted this guy with his nose facing a little bit to the upside so that he looks like his head is up and he's, he's coming out of out of the stump and uh, we do have that that bear that showed up in the beginning there on the on the tree and if you carved that bear exactly like he was on the tree uh, he'd, he'd look like you uh, had a bad pattern or something so a lot of times these patterns, you got to select the pattern uh, to meet what you think. Because if you if you go ahead and carve an animal, and I've talked about different uh, things before, uh, birds, fish, that sort of thing. If you carve them exactly like they are, they, they need a little bit of artistic license in them, at least in my opinion, uh, to make them look right. So that would have been the ear line. I was kind of surprised on bears when I look start looking at bears uh, at how, how far back the ears are on them. And then in reality, how the snout really kind of sticks it completely out of the face. So this guy initially starts out uh, looking more like a rat because his nose is, is way too long. And it, it takes me uh, five minutes into the video before I, I fix that for you. But a, a lot of people have been asking about the, the, the power carvers there. That, that's a uh, Oz Elite. Oz makes a Oz plus two that a lot of the guys that are that really enjoy carving and, and, and want to spend the money, but uh, 700 bucks basically. And uh, I'm not trying to be snobby or anything, but I, I think that's probably, if you're going to do a lot of this, that's probably the entry level or the professional entry level. And uh, you can get by with the cheaper ones, but you're going to end up uh, replacing them or, or, or they're not going to be as happy. This thing is smooth as glass. And it has a 332nd calling in it. And uh, someone asked in a comment, I'll get back to the comments and, and rate those. But they ask if these uh, things uh, take an eighth inch collet. Primarily, they are set up for eighth inch collets uh, when they come from the carving world. And 332nd. There's really no other collets that uh, typically go in these. So 332nd would be the smaller. And then eighth inch would be the larger. And this is a Typhoon burr on there kind of a long 
uh, radial and it's a, a, med a green one if you start looking at the typhoons. Uh, not too many people use the typhoons. They, most people go to the cutsalls. I use the cutsalls and then I, there, there's one set from Typhoon that I like and that's these smaller ones. And then I, I don't even know who makes the, the ruby and the sapphire bits. Uh, I have to look them up like from uh, Rocky Mountain Carvers or someplace along any, any of the wood carving supply supply folks. So then taking this guy down and here's an interesting thing. These came from Bear Valley or something in their eye socket uh, sets. And what they do is they, they cut it. Right now they're kind of cutting and a little bit of burning. As they start to get worn in, they burn. You've seen, uh, you can see some people uh, will make these if you just get a shaft and you, you put a, a convex in there or a concave in there, you can burn them on. This has got little cutters on the edge and there's the whole set. And somehow or other, I, I've already misplaced two of them, even though I keep putting them back in the bag and then. <coughs> they, uh, Put a perfect spear in there and then uh, later on you're going to notice I, I take these off a little bit if i played with them a few times uh, as a replacement for the glass eyes I, I was hoping the biggest one would be big enough for a bear and uh, we'll see because that would be would be nice if you're going to do some quick production work on bears uh, to be able to just uh, pop the eye, bar, uh, eye socket in there pretty quick because the eye socket takes a little while to do That's a small uh, diamond burr in there. It's one of those cheap ones from Amazon. Uh, you get a whole set for $12. Two or three of them won't even fit in the collet because the shaft is uh, uh, that far off. It's too big to go in the 332nd and too small to sit in the eighth inch. But uh, you get what you pay for and $12 gets you a whole set. So you, I can see a couple things on this that I'm not really liking. One is the, the ears are a little too far part on it for what I, I took down and that, that's the whole intent of this guy this is a practice piece in miniature before I start uh, doing the big stuff and uh, I thought his nose was way too long and he kind of had a, a rat look about him but I, I like that little diamond I like the little round uh, burrs and someday I'll, I'll get motivated and, and look around on the web and, and find actually a quality one. I wish they'd make a little sapphire uh, or a ruby uh, round this small in 332nd. I, I use them a lot on the birds and these things. One of the reasons I like the round burr, uh, those of you that follow know this, I, I can go in any general direction. I'll use that to set. Uh, in, in this case, I'm putting feather lines in. Uh, but the round allows me to go in any general direction, whereas if I'm using a taper or a cone, it kinda, I'm kind of using the side of the burr at any length along the cone. And with this round, I, I can just use it in any general direction I want to go. If I want to go backwards, forwards, uh, I can use it kind of like a pencil, like a pencil eraser. And this was terrible, terrible wood. and. Uh, this is definitely not what you'd want to, to, to save because it's about half gone already. And uh, look, it would take quite a bit of preservative on it. If you start off with a little bit better wood or, or even wet wood, now wet wood, you got the danger. Always have a danger in the tree of this. This thing is going to crack, not this one particularly, but if he were grown a big log, say a two or three foot log, uh, you could just about bet 90% that there are cracks will develop in him. And uh, the second thing you can bet about 90% is the crack will go right through the middle of his face or right on the side of his face. And there's a lot of folks that show you how to deal with that. And, uh, so there's how he's coming out. I, I, I like a lot of aspects of this and it being a practice and then a lot of aspects I don't. Like I said, I think I got the ears a little too far out. I, I'm not sure I left enough uh, around his chest and his, his head underneath the snout. That's the smaller ruby. That's the smallest ruby they make, the little taper. And I'm, I'm cutting in the nose and kind of a, a little bit of a smile because these things need to have a smile in them, I think. They're kind of like the decoys and the birds. I try to put a little bit of a smile, which is uh, not necessarily correct in nature. 
but it, it makes you feel better. I did come down uh, and, and put a little bit of, of burn in this just to get the um, the lines that I wanted in there. I tried to burn him with a lighter, didn't work, and then I gave up and, and came back and painted him. So here's the, the bear. You can see I didn't like the ear. I think his head's a little too flat on the top. I, I think he has a kind of a nice look though. He's a kind looking character coming out. So stand by. I've got an owl and an old man spirit video practice, little mini chainsaw practice in this series. But uh, like, comment, subscribe as always. We need to get the subscribers up. Lots of you watching but not subscribing. So click the subscribe button. Thanks a lot. This is Ben, ben with Studio on the Lake.